Okay, we're ready, Paul. Oh. Sorry, that, that was on my side. Sorry, um, I'm here this morning, or this afternoon, I guess, for you guys, um, to talk about printing with cups on OS2. Um, I guess the, uh, the reason I ended up here is uh, uh, reading the OS2 World uh, Forum a few months back um, and talking about topics for Walkstock, and I think Neil suggested that, uh, you know, someone should do a presentation on cups and he was thinking of doing it and I sort of said, well, hey, if, if anyone's going to do it, you know, I, I probably should do it and uh, gives me an excuse. That, well, I always struggle with thinking of what people want to hear about. Um, uh, so in this case, the topic has been suggested that it's something I, I know a bit about, so I thought, hey, I'll do it. So uh, unfortunately, I probably haven't had as much time to spend on the presentation as I would have liked. It's been pretty crazy at work the last few weeks, so uh, hopefully what's in here is interesting. And, well, even how I'm trying, if I can get um, a desktop sharing in Skype to work, to do a little demo of adding a printer and uh, setting up the port driver uh, in OS2, just to, and I feel you might trust me on the printer, you might be able to hear the printer print, but I can show you the printout. And honestly, it's not pre-planned, although I'm right behind me. <laughs> um, so next slide, please, Neil. All right. What is CUPS? And I'll just get it here as well so that I can see what I'm doing. So CUPS um, is an acronym, a Common Unix Printing System. Um, originally developed by a guy called Michael Sweet, um, who was the founder and, and owner of EV Software Products, um, was adopted as the default printing system in Mac, in the Mac OS, in about 2002. So it's been around for a long time. And I think most um, most Unixes have used this as their default printing system since, you know, around the 2000 time frame. Um, interestingly, Apple actually purchased Easy Software products back in 2007, and I guess the, the, the benefits of open source software is that with the licensing that was on the product at the time, um, Apple haven't closed sources, closed source the product or anything like that. They've continued to enhance it, um, accept fixes and things like that. So it's still very widely used on Unices. And one of the interesting things about how Cups works is but back when I first started working on it, it accepted um, PostScript input um, as the default file input. Um, nowadays it's moved more towards PDF. Um, and basically it receives a PostScript or PDF um, file and magically translates it into a printer of specific format and then sends the job to the printer. So I guess the key part here is that from an operating system point of view, if you can provide PostScript or PDF input to CUPS, then CUPS can print it. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. How does it work? So, as, as I said, it's quite a mechanism that allows print jobs to be sent in a standard format, that standard format being PostScript or PDF. Um, the print data goes to a scheduler, uh, sends jobs to a filter system, and a, actually a series of filters. It's quite interesting when you um, uh, you know, watch the different filters that run in the background and eventually convert the format to a job, the a format the printer can understand. Next slide, please, Neil. Okay, how does it work again? Continue. <laughs> yep. So, once the filters have processed the data to a format the printer can understand, it sends the data to what's called a back end. So, that may be USB, it might be socket, uh, LPR. Um, IPP, the Internet Printing Protocol, or there are a couple of printer-specific formats. There's one for Canon um, wireless printers. Canon have a proprietary sort of USB over IP um, protocol they use with their wireless printers. Um, thankfully, there is a open source um, backend for that, which I've ported. Um, I forget who uses it. it might be David McKenna uses it. I forget now. Um, and uh, Cups makes extensive use of PostScript and it actually has a, a, their own uh, raster format that it converts, so it converts from PostScript into a Cups raster format and then from that raster format into you know, Epson language or HP or, or Samsung or, or whatever for the destination printer. Uh, next slide please Neil. Alright, history of Cups. So I guess the, I can't take the credit for thinking of uh, porting Cups to OS2. Um, Originally, Bart um, and Lubrin on and Adrian Bischwind on the Netlabs IRC channel, they nagged me for some months um, about cups. And to be honest, 
what was left right to explain? The fact that OS2 had a, I guess, reasonable PostScript driver and CUPS could handle PostScript output as an input. Um, they asked the question, well, what company is CUPS as a brick engine for OS2? And it took me many months to get my head around how, you know, how this Unix daemon um, could be useful in OS2 just because it could take PostScript input. Um, you know, how would you actually get the PostScript from OS2 two cups and I, I couldn't get my head around that for some time. Um, eventually the penny dropped that you know with the, with some kind of port driver um, the postscript output from the IBM postscript driver could be automatically <coughs> sent to the cup steamer and printing could work seamlessly and uh, yeah eventually the penny dropped and we got it working and uh, you know now it does work quite well. Uh, next slide please. Okay. So first builds of cups were generated, I had to go backtrack through some, uh, through OS2 sites and some other sites to establish this. First builds were generated in late 2006 and the reality is the first builds weren't very useful. Um, the scheduler used to get um, hung up, jobs would get stuck in the queue, um, you know, it would crash. Um, and with help from, uh, from Newt, um, he made quite a few fixes to the select code in Lipsy. Um, and with those fixes, the shed driller is stable, and I say ish because you know, there's still some foibles um, that exist. Select on Lipsy isn't the most stable um, API in the history of mankind. <laughs> um, other components that are required to support the CUPS, because CUPS is itself is just a demon that processes jobs, is GoScript, which whilst we already had um, the GoScript builds, um, back when I started working on CUPS, um, GoScript needed to get a handle of the CUPS raster format so it could take the input job in PostScript and then convert to CUPS raster format for the other filters into the next job. And the other thing it needs is, is a printer driver. And in this case, um, HPLib is one example of a printer driver uh, that's generated or produced by HP. Um, it's mostly open source and supports the vast majority of printers that HP sell. I say mostly open source because there are some um, HP printers that require a closed source um, binary block to work even on Unix, and we can't do anything with that um, binary block like a DLL for Unix, and so there are some HP printers that um, can't be supported on OS2 even though they do work um, with an open source driver, semi-open source driver on other uh, Unices. Um, Gutenprint is an open source driver, um, mainly supports Canon and Epson printers. Uh, Splits is one uh, for Samsung printers. And there are other uh, open source drivers out there. Um, if they're open source and it's not currently available, I can probably board it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, Cups print job processing. Yeah, so this is an example for Cups 1.48 or below. It has changed a little bit in newer versions of Cups, but it's still um, help see how the processing works. So, uh, firstly, for the PostScript files set the cup. Um, there's a filter called ps to ps which takes the PostScript input and produces PostScript output. But it, it's a filter that runs through and tries to clean up PostScript. I guess it seems that even, even, on, uh, even on Unix, uh, not all PostScript code is created equal and uh, you know, some, some programs may generate output that may confuse cups, so I've tried to clean it up. And then runs a filter called ps to raster um, which takes PostScript file uh, input and converts it to the cups raster format. Um, and GoScript is used for that. Um, then a printer specific backend will run. So, example being raster to Gutenprint, which is for a printer supported by Gutenprint, which takes that cups raster format and converts it into a, a format that the printer can understand, which I guess is similar to like the F on me or, or whatever on OS2, um, where that's taking the IBM print format and converting it to the, uh, to the printer specific format. Uh, finally, the backend filter, which might be USB, it's a USB printer, or socket for a printer that uses the uh, HP JetDirect protocol, uh, is right to send the printer, to send the data to the printer, sorry. 
So all that stuff happens in the background. As far as the end user is concerned, um, they send some PostScript data or print a print job, and uh, the cup schedule magically does all this stuff uh, for you. Next slide, please, Neil. Okay, current status. So currently, um, the cup steamer itself, um, I've got a build of 2.04 that is, uh, should be on my website, but isn't at the moment. It's in, it's in a thread on uh, OS2 World, with a link to it. Um, the Grid's A version 2.1 of Cups. Um, I haven't got around to building that yet. As I said, it's been pretty crazy busy at work recently. For those versions um, of Cups, there's a Cups Builders package. Um, currently at the 1.0.71 level, it's probably a few points behind the latest release. Uh, Ghost Script, our current build is at 9.15. Uh, a printer driver, so you need HP Lift for a HP printer, or most other printers would be using um, Google Print. And some patience, I, I say some patience because uh, Alex has done a great job of creating some walking packages for a lot of this stuff. Um, but it does take a little bit of work to get configured, and that, I guess that's one of the, you know, the current barriers um, in terms of getting more widespread adoption of, of cups and OS2. Uh, next slide, please, Neil. Okay, available printer drivers. So, as, as I mentioned, HP Lib, um, our current build is version 3.14. Uh, there is a little bit newer build out there, or, or source code out there, um, uh, for Unix, uh, supports HP devices, and I've put a link in here, and hopefully that yeah. his presentation will be on the walks on website soon. Um, but HP is an open source. Um, HP, you know, uh, there's lots of things with the HP product that I don't like, um, but the fact that uh, they provide an open source driver um, for any of their printers, let alone um, most of them, is, is something to be commended. I wish other OEMs would do the same thing. Uh, and key point here, if someone's looking for a, uh, you know, a purchasing a printer, just to be mindful of, is that uh, whilst most models listed at that URL above can be supported, in the reference the draw bar for plugin can't be supported. And on the next slide, here was an example of the uh, description um, of what HP included. Um, so, on the, on the next slide, Neil? Yes, my available printer is HP Lib. I have available. Well, it's very much like it. It, it has a delay. So, oh, okay. there we go. All right. So, so yeah, the, the second top point is the statement that shows on the HP website, um, which I guess is a warning bell that um, that model won't work on OS2. Um, you know, the same thing there is the printer required downloadable driver plugin to enable print facts or scan support. Of course, on Unix, you can use HP setup to install the printer and download and install the plugin. The plugins are released under the price for print, not open license, and are on half of the source code. So, if a printer has that statement, don't buy it. And then I have seen on OS2 World um, where people have inquired about some HP models of printers. In many occasions, it is one of these models that uh, unfortunately can't be supported. So next slide, please, Neil. Okay, available. Should be Google Print. Yeah, good. Print. So our, our current build is version 5.2.10. There is a release candidate currently out of 5.2.11, which adds some more printers, um, primarily Canon and Epson printers. And unfortunately, whilst I wouldn't say Google Print isn't actively um, maintained, uh, as I say, there is a uh, release candidate currently out. It doesn't see the level of activity that it did going back a number of years. There used to be quite regular releases, adding new Canon and Epson printers. Um, so yeah, I mean a lot of the current model Canon and Epson printers they may not be listed uh, in Google Print. It doesn't mean they won't work. They may work with an older driver. I think many of us would have tried that in the past with you know, like the Omni driver, um, trying. You know, some of the older supported models uh, with a newer printer trying to get a, a printer to work. Um, but yeah, latest model Canon and Epson, not as widely well, supported as HP. And Splits, um, which is another open source driver, hasn't been updated for several years. There is some um, SVN updates. But um, you know, I did have a, a, a Samsung cover laser printer working here with Splits quite well until the printer died. So 
that does work quite well for the devices that it supports. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, available device backends. So, in terms of uh, connection methods, um, the, the use with cups, a uh, USB, um, which uses the USB um, 1.0.dll and USB portable. Uh, LibUSB is a standard library for accessing uh, USB devices on Linux that I ported using USB calls a couple of years ago. Um, socket printing will print this that utilize HP Object Direct. LPD, the live printer daemon, which OS2 supports quite well, um, with the uh, LP SLPR port driver. Um, IPP, uh, Internet Printing Protocol. Uh, BJNP, which is the bubble jet um, protocol I mentioned earlier. Um, for certain Canon wireless printers. And in parallel, um, whilst CUPS in theory can support parallel printers, um, it would require a lot of rerun. Oh, last one. Oh. <laughs> Looks like I lost you. Oh, yep. No, I can hear you now, but I can't see you. Oh, there we are. You're back. Are you back? You're back. Parallel. We lost you in parallel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the, the call dropped out. Obviously, it revolves automatically. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so parallel. Um, yeah, I can't see you guys yet. That's all right. Uh, parallel, as I mentioned, um, the source plate is there on, on Linux, and obviously, parallel printers can be supported on on Linux. Um, it would require a lot of rewriting um, to get that code working uh, on OS 2. And in reality, um, parallel printers, you know, I don't think any printer has been built with a parallel port since the days when OS 2 had printer drivers. So uh, I don't see any value in spending time uh, working on a parallel port uh, back here. Yeah, it's more of an academic exercise than anything else, and I certainly couldn't test it. So. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, installation help. So, as, as I mentioned, um, Alex Taylor packages um, for a lot of this stuff that does make uh, installation much easier. And uh, they're the packages I think that are used for uh, Ecom Station 2.2, which um, has an option to include um, a version of Cups. I'm pretty sure it's using Alex's work. Um, at the time of writing, which was a couple of weeks ago, those warpings were based on CUPS 1.48 and GhostScript 8.71. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the newer CUPS versions, um, you know, really they're, they're using the latest version of the software, but in terms of functionality, um, there's no real impact from the older releases in those, uh, in those warpings. And as I mentioned, the ECS 2.2 can option, can install uh, these as part of the system. And, from the, uh, the few of the uh, slides I saw yesterday morning, it looks like Blue Live will have the option to install it as well. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, integrating CUPS with OS2. Um, so, as, as we as mentioned earlier, um, you know, it took me a while to get my head around how this could be used, how CUPS could be used with OS2. So, one nice thing about QT um, apps is that uh, as part of the QT port, um, because Unix, uh, because CUPS is used widely on uh, Unix, uh, QT can print natively to a CUPS scheduler. So you know, if you've got a CUPS server running on your system and you hit print, uh, file print on a QT app, uh, that app can see the printer uh, without any extra work. If it's for an OS2 native application, they only understand OS2 printers and can't see the, uh, the printers that are available on the CUPS server. So in terms of integrating CUPS, um, the PostScript driver is required to be installed on the system. And we have a CUPS support driver, which lets you set the output device um, uh, to a CUPS server and the name of the printer on the CUPS server. And from that point on, you can hit print on that PostScript printer and it sends the job straight away to the CUPS uh, server. Um, Alex has written a, a program called CUPSWiz and that can assist with um, setting up the PostScript driver um, which includes uh, importing the uh, PostScript uh, printer description or PPD file into the PostScript driver so you get the options of paper trays and, and different um, print quality options that are specific to the, to the printer you have. Uh, CupSquiz is very useful for that, makes it much easier. And, uh, um, rather than doing it inside the command line, which isn't always a hot one for 
Uh, next slide, please. Okay, printer specific options. Um, and I guess this is, this is one of the challenges um, that we have. So, printer specific options are defined in a printer's PD file or post printer definition file. And for anyone in the audience who's used uh, in the past, um, you know, even PostScript printers that handle PostScript natively still have a PPD file to set up uh, specific options. And so, some of those are easy to import into um, the IBM PostScript provider, some of them are not. Uh, and that comes down to the fact there's a program called PIN, which is part of the IBM PostScript provider that imports those files. Um, PIN, I don't think there's any nice way to describe it other than to say that it's an awful piece of software. Um, we do have the source code in the DDK, which I guess is the only positive um, thing about it. Um, what we found, particularly with some of the PPD files that come in Google Print and other um, modern uh, post uh, printers, or even ones for you know a, a, a laser printer that supports PostScript that people have, that the fault that doesn't make up is that PIN will crash handling um, PPD files, if it gets something it doesn't understand, if it's choked, it's just got awful nasty. Um, so Alex and I have made some fixes to PIN to try and you know, get around some of the, you know, the, the major issues. Um, but we still have a case where modern PPD files often crash PIN, or worst case, it, it processes the, um, the request and it looks like it's all working fine. Um, but then the next time you get to print something, it crashes the PostScript driver and all the system and, and you know, it's just nasty. So we've got some links to do with parts or we either in parts or rewrite pin. Um, next slide please, Neil. Okay, updated pin PostScript driver. So as I mentioned, through testing we found some specific commands um, that can cause issues with pin and with, with the between Alex and myself, um, you know, fix some of those. Um, Alex, on his website, uh, has a, in, in the past I've mucked around by a couple of PostScript drivers where I had pre-populated those drivers with a bunch of uh, common DVDs um, from Google Print or from HP Lib. Um, Alex has a driver called Pierce, which incorporates the, all the fixes that I've made but also some fixes that Alex has made and some additional features to work around that. Um, and and Cups was automated, and I've got the URL in here for Pierce Print, and as a, whilst I did have some PostScript drivers around you know, some years ago, I recommend everyone uses Pierce Print, and that's whether you're using Cups or whether you're using the PostScript um, printer. Uh, Alex also added some code in there to support uh, treetop fonts for PostScript printers, which wasn't in the IBM um, code. Um, so yeah, there's also fixes not just to pin but also to the PostScript driver um, to hopefully make printing jobs more smooth. Uh, next slide please, Neil. Current issues? <coughs> uh, current issues we have. One, one major one is uh, lack of testing. Um, you know, whether, whether it's uh, similar to the topic I talked about last year where people test and don't provide feedback or whether it's just they don't test, I'm not sure. But Dave McKenna and Pete Brown have done the lion's share of uh, testing. Um, you know, if anyone reads through, there's an eCups dev mailing list um, through the history on there. Um, lots of work been done by those guys to test things. Pete Brown also wrote up some documentation, which is the house that I mentioned below. And the key is, you know, I can only test one printer here by USB or software printing. Um, you know, putting in another printer that's been out there and different connection methods, even if not all USB printers or devices that print equal, uh, without feedback, we won't make any progress. And you know, unless you want to use a 10 year old printer on those two, this really is the only viable solution for printing unless you want to buy, and make sure you buy a PostScript or PCL uh, printer. So with, with Dave and Pete, they've done a lot of testing and given pretty clear feedback on issues. And without feedback, things don't get fixed. Um, other issues are documentation. Um, so the wiki at uh, NetLabs has a how-to document at AQ. Um, they need to be updated to the, to the latest versions. Um, and you know that's something that community members can help with. Um, everyone's busy, but that uh, yeah, does help a lot of people if they spend some time updating that documentation. 
Okay, available resources. Available resources were at. Um, yes, it's trying to be the YouTube and the other idea. Um, so there's the e mailing list, um, so I've included the Gmail link um, here uh, to that mailing list. Um, there's a bunch of threads that um, I was doing well uh, as well, and there's one specific one here that um, uh, talks about uh, Cups version 2, uh, which is pretty useful. Um, we fixed, fixed the number of issues um, uh, in those builds as a result of feedback in that thread. Um, the other one is to bug me on IRC. Um, my my log on is sort of perpetually on the channel. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm aware of a lot as well. And after I do it in the evening, I will read, um, scroll back to uh, to see the questions. Um, there's the network. <laughs> there we go. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes again. Uh, where, where did we get to? Uh, let's see, where were we? Available resources. Yeah. <laughs> you started breaking out there. Yeah. Oh, this is on Alex's presentation then. Yeah, but we're on that slide. We're on that slide. Yeah. Uh, at Alex's presentation. Okay, and, and <coughs> it was 2011, um, there's still is a lot of good content in there, uh, particularly in describing how, how some things work with some graphics and things. So uh, in skimming through what was available, I thought that was still um, quite a useful um, uh, presentation. Uh, next slide, please, Neil. Okay, future plans. So I, I guess I started thinking about what, what other things could be done um, improve things. The, the current port driver, I guess, is a bit of a clutch. Um, it came about, I knew of another port driver uh, on Pope's, I think it was, um, which executed a, a third party uh, executable um, to, to print jobs. I forget what, uh, what that specific uh, port driver was um, supporting, but uh, Cups has an LPR executable. Um, similar to the IBM one, but it's used to send the job to a to a CUPS uh, print server. And so the current port driver, all it does is when it gets a print job, saves it to a temporary file, and then executes LPR at um, from CUPS um, with parameters for the uh, print server IP and also the name of the printer, um, and and then executes the LPR and, and the job goes to the printer. Um, it would be much nicer if that port driver could actually ask the cup server what, what printers are available and actually have a GUI to select um, the driver. It takes away any configuration errors with someone making a typo with the name of the printer. Um, and also, instead of relying on saving a temporary file and then calling it executable, um, we could actually use the cup's DLL to transfer the file to the server automatically rather than executing the program. Will be some, some small performance benefits in that. Um, so that's something I want to look at when I get some time. Not sure what that's going to be because it's uh, fairly busy. Uh, next slide, please, Neil. Okay, recommended printers for OS2. Um, recommended printers, I'd always recommend if, if you can find a affordable uh, PostScript printer or printer that has native PostScript support or native. Um, Lazier, PCL5 or PCL6 support, um, you most likely won't need to use CUPS. And, you know, CUPS does provide, there is some overhead in CUPS in processing the job. So if the printer can support a native protocol, um, like Lazier or PostScript, that is the preference. Um, although in many cases, depending on attachment methods that are up for the, for the printer, um, some laser printers do, do require something like the IPP protocol 
that we don't have a native output to write for in OS2, so you can see cups will still be required anyway. Um, and if you can't get a PostScript, print, PostScript uh, printer, um, I'd recommend a HP device, but with the earlier caveats on devices that require a closed source component, um, which, is, which is a minority of devices. Um, I know when, when I was doing some work a couple of years ago, um, there was a user who wanted scanning and printing, I think it was on a, on a PhotoSmart 7510 printer, so I ended up buying one of those uh, models. And I also bought the cheapest HP printer I could buy, which was about 40 Australian dollars, and had it working um, by USB very easily with HP Lip. So you know, one of the benefits is that um, you you can mostly go to your local electronic store and buy a cheap HP printer, and it will probably work with HP Lip. Uh, next slide, please, Neil. All right, conclusion. So CUPS provides the mechanism to support modern printers on OS2. It doesn't require direct support from OEMs, um, although more open source drivers in the same style of HP that would help. Um, Canon do provide drivers, Canon as an example, do provide Linux drivers, but they're not open source. So if you're not on one of the more common Linux variants, um, you know, you're out of luck as well. And the other thing that would help is, is uh, more people to test cups and help improve documentation, the documentation that's available. Now what I want to try and do, if I can work out how to do it in Skype, is if I can work out how to share my desktop, I was going to at least show the cup scheduler and how um, some settings can be changed. Now, the, the problem with that is I've never done desktop sharing in Skype before, so I'm not exactly sure how to do it. And I don't see any sharing? obvious options. Um, Alex does it on Windows with a PM. So I don't know if oh, it's best. Oh, share screens. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> nice. Cool. Super. So I, I, hopefully you can see <coughs> the whole desktop as it does. Uh, yes. I probably could try and work out how to share just, just the, uh, the OS2 uh, part of that. but. Uh, let me let me see see if I can do that. <coughs> Let, let's stick with the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So my my very messy uh, desktop. So I have an icon for um, the cup statement. Um, Alex's uh, installer actually um, installs this as a, as a background daemon, so it starts automatically at start. Um, because I do a lot of testing, I've got it on the desktop so that I can uh, close or open it at will, so I'll just fire that one up. Um, I'll fly for a browser, and this is. Um, Aurora, which is a QT browser, because uh, Firefox isn't working in my machine at the moment. So, uh, so to access the um, local uh, uh, print server, uh, you browse localhost on port 631. Um, so it's a web accessible configuration. Um, within that, uh, within that admin panel, there's ways of adding printers. Um, uh, looking at what jobs are currently in the queue, uh, looking at what printers are currently installed. So I'm just going to, this is what I was testing with last night. I'll just delete this printer and add one. So if I want to add a printer, I go to administration and then add printer. And what, what the scheduler will do is it will try and probe the network um, for any devices that it checks. It's not always perfect. Uh, but in this case, discover network printers, PhotoSmart 7510, which is the printer behind me. So it's automatically detected the make and model of that printer. And I hit continue. So it comes up with a name for the printer, <coughs> a description, you can add a location. And in terms of connection, it's using the socket protocol. And this is the IP that <coughs> it's found the printer on and the port number. And I can hit continue. And then ask what, what model the printer is. And so 
It's detected the bit, what it thinks is the best driver automatically, which is the HP cups, um, which is the HP lift driver for the PhotoSmart 7510. But there are a lot of HP printers that are supported here. I think there's probably several thousand models of HP printers that, that in theory, at least will all work. Um, if I'm happy with that driver, which I am, I hit add printer. Let's me uh, uh, ask for some um, you know, default settings for that printer. Um, I don't want letter size paper, I don't want A4, yeah, the, the metric system and all that, and set default options. So that printer is now set up in cups. If I go to the, the printers tab, um, oh. <coughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> It's happy now, so a, a, a refresh was all that was needed there. If I click on that printer, um, I get an admin panel. One of the things I can do on one of these tabs is print a test page, which, I don't know if you can hear the printer in the background. And, oh, of course, you, 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 uh, you can't see the camera, so uh, bear, bear with me. I was trying to show you the print job, but um, if I, if I, if I can read, read, read that from here, but this is a, a sample um, test page, which is the one that I just printed out. Or the one I prepared earlier on, you'll have to believe me, it just, it just turned out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and hopefully the desktop's back now. Yes? Yes. So, in terms of, um, so, so as I said, Aurora is a GT application. So, when I hit print from Aurora, it can see that printer which I added. So, it automatically knows um, what drivers, what, what, uh, what printers are available on the CUP server. And uh, you know you can read that automatically, but an OS2 application um, can't. So if I go to local system and printers, so I have cheated here. There is already um, an icon set up for this printer. Um, and in terms of the output board cups, is the, is the uh, board driver we have, um, and at the moment. To set it up, it's a pretty basic GUI. So, localhost is where the CUP server is installed, and the CUP's print name that HP underscore PhotoSmart underscore 7510 underscore series is the same as the um, uh, the same name as what we had in the uh, in the CUP's server. Um, so, with those with those connected up. I can launch something like the e-editor and type in, this is a test, and hit file and print, HP7550, and hit OK. And again, the printer is firing up, you'll have to believe me. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. And <laughs> the connection is not stable today. Yeah, it's not stable. That's a bit good. And the uh, print, print that I mentioned, which is the result of uh, printing the file from the e um, uh, file editor, and prints out on the printer. So, just a couple of simple examples of. Uh, you know, a test page and it's just setting up what driver to print to the OS2 printer. And in terms of material, that, that was what I had. Now I see on um, IRC, um, Andreas Gutings made, made a valid point on um, uh, printers which are full PostScript, don't need cups, but even with a PostScript printer, you need cups to print from QT apps. That, that, that would be correct. Uh, a, a QT app. Um, 
for it to know about a uh, a printer, they, it has to that printer has to be added in cups. So if you don't, that is right. Even with a um, for printing from QT, you do still need cups if you want to print. So any any questions from anyone else on cups or I guess any other projects that I've worked on for Can you turn the webcam? Do you want to bring up the screen? It's just, um, I have a CP 1025 NW, which is a color. Sorry, I can, I can, I can barely hear that. Okay. And we have a guy here with a yeah. HP CP 1025 NW printer, and you say it's not supported? Yeah, it's root requires one of the special drivers. Okay. And yeah. was it listed that way on that website, or did you know? I ran it? across it because I was playing with it in Linux and then tried it on oh, uh, okay. OS 2 and figured it out. I don't have a driver I need. Yeah, okay. So it's not that it's wrong on that website, it's that you had it on the Linux anyway, and it was working. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Does anyone else have a printer? No. Well, thanks. Anyone got a brother printer working with cups? I haven't even tried. Um, a rather printer, no? Well, you would need it even for a QT app, but, right. I don't know. I have a brother, and I just need a post. Yeah, in a regular OS2 system. Well, I'm for big BDs, you know, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. And it is free. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Anything else? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, thank Paul. You. No problems, I guess. I guess the walked it off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No worries. See you guys. All right. Okay. See you. Bye, Thanks. Paul. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.